Hi, this is part four of the lip sync lesson. So the software has done its best to interpret that audio file and try to match up the sounds to the mouth poses. And then it inserted those mouth poses from that mouth switch folder and you'll see them represented here in the keyframes. In fact, you can pass your mouse pointer along and you can see what sound, what mouth pose is being used here for each one of these keyframe dots. Well, you'll need to replace some, you'll need to add some, delete some, you'll just have to fine tune this and clean up what the software didn't do all that well. Now it is a bit tedious and that's why for the project that you'll be handing in that I only want you to do approximately six sentences. So the process here is to click on your timeline ruler and you can scrub back and forth across the timeline listening to what your character is saying. Sometimes you have to play through short bits, rewind, uh, the scrubbing back and forth. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to hear when you're hearing a specific sound. You don't need to stop over top of a keyframe. You're not limited to that. If your character is saying a sound that starts with, say, an M or a B, and it happens to be in between uh, some of the keyframe dots that you already see here, then by all means put it in. You would stop there with your scrub bar, and then in the Layers palette, you would right mouse button click, and you would choose the one that says M, B, or P. All right, and you'll see the mouth shape change. There may be some dots in here where none belong. For example, I'm, I'm just looking here. Um, right in here for mine, there's this area of apparent silence, but there's a couple of dots. And if those dots were representing something where the mouth was open, then I would want to delete them. In this case, it's showing a closed mouth. Now, it would be hard for me to actually be playing mine through while I'm talking, while I'm explaining this to you, because of the sound of my character's voice and my talking are, you know, it's going to sound pretty muddied up. But, um, but there would be areas where you might think, wow, I don't, I don't want anything in there at all. And then you could click and delete that particular keyframe. So if I didn't like this one here, I highlight it and then I push delete on my keyboard. Now, you probably won't get them all. It would be very difficult to strive for perfection here. It does get kind of time consuming. What you want to do is just try and get it to be pretty close so that when you play through, it looks like your character is pretty much mouthing the sounds that you're hearing from the audio file. And remember, if you need to, you can always do use the zoom in tool if you need to see these dots larger in order to be able to, you know, click on them more easily to delete or change. But in order to change them, you can just point over top of one right here, and then you just move over to the layers palette, right mouse button click, and then choose whatever mouth sound you want. You'll see that not all letters are represented. Not all sounds are represented. You only have a certain number of different mouth poses to choose from. So sometimes you're just going to have to choose something that looks the most like the, the sound you're hearing. Like, for example, the word restaurant. If you sounded that out yourself, then you might imagine that the R in the beginning of the word restaurant could resemble the mouth shape of a similar to a W. Okay? you could try that mouth pose out. And remember, do not try to open up the mouth switch folder and then select individually from here. You will not be successful if you try and do that. The only way this works is by keeping the folder closed and then doing the right mouse click and choosing from this drop down menu. Work on this practice file just a little bit and get yourself familiar with how to go about changing the mouth poses in order to match up more with the audio.
In the next video, I'll give you some pointers on how to animate those iSwitch folders that you worked on, and a couple of pointers about the audio file, and also I will cover the project objectives.